right here on the Hope Channel Uganda. My name is Pastor D.W. West. I'm your host each and every morning and what a blessing it is to be with you. Uh, currently we are going in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So one day uh, we are looking at the book of Genesis and then the next day we look at the book of Matthew. So two days ago we were in Genesis and we looked at the first chapter of the book of Genesis. And then yesterday, we took a look at the first chapter of, of, the, of the book of Matthew. Now today, we're gonna take a look at, at Genesis chapter two, and we're gonna look at verses one to seven. And today, we're gonna look at the title, God's Perfect Creation. God's Perfect Creation. Let's pray. Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we ask right now that you will help us to have understanding of your word. We pray it in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen. So again, good morning, brothers and sisters. And uh, today we're diving into the book of Genesis, specifically verses one to seven of chapter two. And this passage talks about the detailed creation of the world and the crowning moment of God's creation, humans. And as we go through this passage, may we be reminded of the perfection and beauty of God's creation and how we as his children are called to steward it as well. We're going to find something even more interesting in this section as well, something that is very important to us as human beings, important to us as Christians. Because as we study this passage, we will see the perfect plan and order in God's creation. We will also understand the significance of humanity as the crowning glory of creation and how we are called to take care of it 
Lastly, we are reminded of the constant presence and love of God in our lives. What's really neat is every week, there's a day that we get to rest, a day that we get to take and remember that God created us. Isn't that something? Every week we have this day. Let's go ahead and read it. In Genesis 2, we're going to read from verse 1 to 7. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. And then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. So we see the Sabbath is created right here before we ever, ever have the Ten Commandments. God blessed it. He sanctified it. He rested from all of his work on this day. So the Sabbath is essential to man. God saw that a Sabbath was essential for man, even in paradise. He needed to lay aside his own interests and pursuits for one day out of the seven, that he might more fully contemplate the works of God and meditate upon his power and goodness. He needed a Sabbath to remind him more vividly of God and to awaken gratitude because all that he enjoyed and possessed came from the, uh, from those, it came from the hand of the creator of God. I'll say amen. I'll say amen. We're going to keep reading. We're going to keep reading in verse four of chapter two of Genesis. It said, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So two important things happen here from verses one to seven. The first thing is, is that God rested from all of his work from the sixth day. So he took the seventh day, he sanctified it, he, he, he made it holy, he set it aside, he rested on it, and then he creates man to till the earth of the ground. So this is kind of neat because we, we see the Sabbath well before the Ten Commandments because a lot of people say, well, the Sabbath, it just doesn't matter anymore. The Ten Commandments no longer matter. But you see, and then they'll say the Sabbath was made for Jews. But at this point in the Bible, there is no Ten Commandments and there are no Jews. So obviously the Sabbath was made for man. We learn more about that from Jesus later on, and we're going to learn about that later. But we also see that his perfect creation was created, and that's man. So it brings me to point number one. He had a perfect plan and order. And in verse one of this passage, we read, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. This verse reveals to us the completeness and the perfection of God's creation. And we know that the number seven means perfection. So God created the heavens and the earth and all that dwells in it in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. So it shows us the significance of rest and the importance of following God's perfect plan and order and following the Sabbath. So God, in his infinite wisdom, had a perfect plan and order in creating our world. He did not rush the process, but instead he worked diligently and purposefully in each day of creation. This reminds us that God is a God of order and excellence. He has a perfect plan for each one of us. And as his children, it is important that we align ourselves with his will and follow his perfect order in our lives. 
Brothers and sisters, we live in a fast paced world. We're all so busy being busy and it can be easy for us to get caught up in the busyness of life and to forget the importance of rest. But we must remember that just as God rested on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, we too need to have time of rest and rejuvenation. That's why we've been given a weekly mental health day. We've been given a Sabbath that we can take and we can set aside weekly so that we can remember that God created us. This not only helps us physically, but it also allows us to reflect and realign ourselves with God's plan, with God's will for our lives. I wish I had a witness in this place. This brings me to point number two, the crown of creation. In verse seven, we read that the Lord formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living creature. And this verse highlights the special creation of humans and how they were made in the image and the very likeness of God. And it also emphasizes the importance of humans as a crown of God's creation. We were made in the image of God. The devil can't take that from you. The only time that's taken from you is when you decide to put yourself in front of the image of God. We were made in the likeness of God. God created man in his image. The devil can't take that from us. But we can get in the way of that image Lord have mercy. So God in his perfect plan created humans in his own image and this sets us apart from the rest of creation. We are the only ones created with the breath of life given the ability to think, reason, and to reflect God's character. This also reveals the intimate relationship between God and mankind. As he handcrafted us, and breathe life into us. And following this, we had face-to-face -face contact with God. I'll say amen for you. You see, as we are called to be the image bearers of God in Christ, we are called to reflect his character and his steward, his creation as well. We are called to show the character of God, to give that grace and that love and that character to as many people as possible. And we must remember that we were created with a purpose and that our lives have great value in God's eyes. He must also strive to nurture our relationship with God and seek to reflect his image in our everyday lives. This brings me to my final point for this morning. My final point today is the Garden of Eden. In verse 8, in verse 8, which we, we have not read yet, it says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, <clears throat> and there he put the man whom he had formed. So we read this, and this verse describes the Garden of Eden, the perfect dwelling place for God's perfect creation. It was a place of beauty abundance, and most importantly, it had God's presence. So they were able to be in the presence of the Almighty God. We see that the Garden of Eden symbolizes the perfect relationship between God and humans. It was a place of intimacy where humans could walk and talk freely with God. And it also symbolizes the perfection of God's creation without the presence of sin and suffering. Now, I don't know about you, but I look forward to a day when Jesus comes in the clouds and he takes us to a place where there will be no more pain, no more dying, no more crying, no more sin, no more suffering, because all the former things will pass away. Now, although we no longer live in this perfect state of the Garden of Eden, we are reminded of the unchanging love and presence of God in our lives. Just as God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, 
He continues to walk with us through all seasons of our life. So we must cherish and nurture our relationship with God. We must strive to bring the peace of Eden into our daily lives. So into our daily lives, we must spend time with God. We must pray. We must worship. We must have Bible study. We must go out and serve others like Jesus did. Brothers and sisters, this is what we've been called to do. But we've also been called to take the seventh day because it was set aside, sanctified, and we've been called to rest on that day. Somebody go on and say amen. Brothers and sisters, as we come to a close this morning, May we be reminded of the perfection of God's creation, of the Sabbath, of man, seven days, the perfect number. Let us be reminded of our role as good stewards of it. Let us remember <clears throat> to be encouraged to rest and to reflect God's character and nurture our relationship with him on a moment to moment day by day basis, just as we see in this passage from Genesis chapter two, verses one to seven. So in conclusion, as we conclude, as we wrap up today in this passage, we see the beauty and the perfection of God's creation. We are reminded of our special role as humans created in the image of God and called to be good stewards of his creation. And brothers and sisters, may we strive to follow God's perfect plan and order. May we cherish our relationship with him and cultivate a piece of Eden in our heart and in our daily lives. And as we go about our week, as we go about our day, let us reflect on the creation of this world and the privilege we have been given as stewards of it. Let us also take time to rest, to reflect on God's character and to seek his presence in our lives. That is why we have the Sabbath day. Man wasn't made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. And Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. We must take our Sabbath day to remember our creator. And may we also share the message of this passage with all around us and proclaim the beauty and the perfection of God's creation. We are told in the book of Isaiah that when we get to heaven, things are going to be awesome. Things are going to be awesome. I want to leave you with this verse today. It's in Isaiah 66. It's in Isaiah 66. In verse 22, for as a new heavens and a new earth, which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord. So shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. So we're told that we're going to keep the Sabbath. In fact, Isaiah 58, Isaiah 58 verses 13 and 14 puts it this way. The word of God says this. It says this. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself 
in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, and the mouth of the Lord has spoken, brothers and sisters. The Sabbath is important. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was made for us. So we should keep the Sabbath God's way. God has given men six days wherein to labor, and he requires that our own work be done in six working days. Acts of necessity and mercy are permitted on the Sabbath. The sick and the suffering are at all times to be cared for, but unnecessary labor is to be avoided. Turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight. Brothers and sisters, it, the prohibition doesn't end here. Nor speaking thine own words, says the prophet. You see, those who discuss business matters or lay plans on the Sabbath are regarded by God as those engaged in actual transactions of business. So to keep the Sabbath holy, we should not even allow our minds to dwell upon the things of a worldly character. And the commandment includes all within our gates. The, the inmates of the houses are to lay aside our worldly business during the sacred hours. And all should unite to honor God by willing service upon his holy day. We are to take the Sabbath day and to respect it and to remember each Sabbath, every seventh day, that we were created by God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we praise your name for the way that you work in our lives. We are so thankful for this series where we are going through the books of Genesis and Matthew. And Father, as we close today, I pray that the word will stay in our hearts and our minds and continue to teach us as we go throughout our day and go throughout our week. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen. Well, I pray that the Lord blesses you with peace and grace. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. right here on the Sunriser. Again, my name's Pastor D.W. West. God bless, and we'll see you then.